Today is now a new day. My friend Joe is visiting from the Netherlands. How are you doing, Joe? How are you guys doing? It is fantastic to have him here. Firstly, Joe is a very talented blacksmith. He's got a YouTube channel. I'll make sure to link him down below. He's going to be here hanging out for a couple of weeks, helping out. And what he is working on now are some tongs to hold this. What could that be? Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe we'll keep it a little bit secret as to what it is that he's working on. But it's a pair of tongs. And it's uh, a different pair of tongs, not, not necessarily blacksmithing tongs, but uh, he's gonna start with some of this 30 millimeter round stock. He's been doing calculations, working out how much material it is that he needs, planning it out. And while he starts forging those, I need to replace the screen protector and the battery on my iPhone. So I do something non-blacksmithing, he does something very blacksmithing. That's all gonna be good fun. Great progress on this enormous pair of tongs. I'm very excited because I've now got my phone back up and running. Oh, what a lovely phone case that is. Yeah, that's right, alexsteelstrap.com. He's going to keep power hammering on that. And meanwhile, I need to get this handle off the blade so that I can start shaping the wood. Exciting stuff. Okay, so I've been in there shaping the handle. Joey's still making great progress over there on the tong. And calamity! I put the handle back on the tang just to see how it was kind of looking, see how much more I needed to take off the rough shaping. Uh, and that's a major, major issue. It came apart. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. I mean, it's a, it's a big problem because two reasons. One, it means I have to glue it again, which is fine. I finally got some wood glue. It's a problem, secondly, because to glue it again, I'm gonna need to prime the surfaces with sandpaper, which is gonna mean that I'm gonna be reducing the thickness of the groove, the depth of the grooves, which means that this tang might not fit on there anymore, which means that I need to increase the depth of the grooves again, which means I need to go in there again with the router, which means that I am risking really messing up this wonderful tang slot. Fun stuff.
these two pieces are now back to the point where they can be glued again. Thankfully, they're still nice and thick, so I'm going to be able to clamp them well, and hopefully with some glue that might be better than epoxy, they'll stay together. You'll notice I went back in with the router. The reason for that was is I think the pieces came apart because it was too tight with the tang of the sword. So I adjusted the router with a couple kind of a uh, couple folds of paper there. It was a little bit further down, and I took another pass on the thinnest piece. And after shimming off the sides, this is a much nicer fit, a little looser, and it means that any squeeze out of the glue isn't going to mean that uh, we completely lose our fit. And this time when we glue it, I'm going to make sure to glue it even higher up, just so that we have that, uh, that leeway to make sure that we don't split it as we're working with it. So this is going to get glued. So I've got some Gorilla Glue, we'll see how this is. Joe is working on the tongs. Here's one of the halves. Looking pretty awesome, looking pretty awesome. Uh, it's pretty, pretty exciting stuff. It's fun having him in the workshop and uh, tongs are looking great. Let's glue this and then work on something else on the project. Okay, there we go. And now we wait for a little bit more. So the next step is this uh, special idea that I had for making this handle a little bit more special, something I've never done before. I want to do a wire wrap. I've got these two wires. This one here is some iron wire. This here is bronze. So I think, I think we've got to use the bronze wire. Come on now, we've got to use the bronze wire. So first things first for this wire, I'm going to take this piece of steel, a little small piece of steel, and we're going to make a tool so that we can twist it really nice and easily with a handheld drill. So there goes some quarter inch round stock. Into the vise we go. A little hammering, then a little more hammering. And a little more hammering. And we now have a tool for twisting the wire. I'm gonna take my drill. And now we've got to twist it. It's now time to twist it! All right, let's have a look at it. Let's see how it's looking. It's looking fantastic! Looks like I just gotta keep twisting. Put through a couple drill batteries. Potential break here. Oh, really? Well, it's. Not that close, but it's gonna fall in. Is it where there's a kink? <gasps> kink? Get a pair of pliers, maybe I can fix it. Oh no, found loads of little kinks. That's no good. Okay, so the first third is good. The rest of it is filled with kinks. I think my, uh, my rock star attitude of just gun the drill at full speed might have been a little, uh, little inappropriate. So I think the only solution possible here is just twist it until these kinks can't be seen at all. Right, let's, let's gun it. Let's see what it looks like. Whoa! That is the craziest thing! What? No way! It's got just do 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 That is insane! Wow! They, I, I would have paid so much more attention to learning about air waves and sound waves in science class if they had let us twist bronze wire and get like this close to it snapping and taking eyes out. Let's, let's keep going. Gun it. More? Yeah, let's do it. So what, oh, what I'm going to do when we're done, we're going to do a little more, but when we're done, I'm going to wrap this onto a piece of steel tube, and then we're going to just anneal it in the forge, I think. Oh, so that way we're going to get all the stresses out of it. I think that'll be a smart thing to do. And then it I should agree. come out ready to wrap on a handle and be just fine. Let's keep going, let's see. Uh, it takes a long, long time over this length, but the twist is tightening up really nicely. I think I'm going to keep going. Until it snaps. Until it snaps. Right, a little more. Until we run out of battery. Oh no! I realize I need the, I need the drill to wrap it back up again. And uh, we're gonna be back when the battery's charged. Let's have a look. Oh, hey, it works! That's a great pair of crucible tongs. Great job, Joe. So now that we have the crucible tongs, Joe is now gonna work on a hoop for lifting up a crucible from both ends. And, you know, like we could, we could bend some steel and weld it, or he can forge one, so we're gonna forge one. We had a good think about how it is that we're gonna do it, and this is what we settled on. Joe and I have decided we're gonna take a piece of flat stock. He is gonna punch a hole at either end, and then what are you gonna do? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this stock, and after this has been punched and slit, I'm going to turn it, and then after on I'm going to follow it still, but 
Before that, I'm just going to try and compress it because if I turn it 90 degrees, it will want to swell out when I hit on it so it bulges out so it can fit around the crucible. After that has been done, I'm going to heat this area, put a quench here so only from the top here it's going to be hot, then do some fullering and then draw out for the handle. So really essentially it's a split, you hammer on the split, it bows open, you draw out the handles, easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's done. So while Joe's working on that and while my battery is charging, I just had an idea. I'm going to make myself up a bobbin from which I can use the drill to wind up all that wire and then go directly into the forge so that I can then anneal the wire. So it's uh, time for a little laving action. Ugly dugly, so I've got a little bobbin made, I've got some cuts there, maybe that'll help tie it all up. I also have a 4mm hole there, and the start of a 4mm hole here, after I then got a little carried away and broke a broken end mill. But, 4mm holes, also up there. This is going to allow me to put it in the drill, the battery is now charged, and wrap up all of that wire, and then put the whole thing in the forge, and anneal it. Soften it, get it ready to wrap onto the handle. Once that's glued up, boom, easy peasy. Before I wrap this up, let's check in with how Joe's progress is going on the pouring Watch More What's It. Ooh, that's looking beautiful, Joe. Go oh, no! No! <laughs> Abandon ship. Hopefully we end up with enough wire, but uh, I'm gonna have to cut it halfway. There, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get this thing. Not a chance I'm gonna be able to get. That horrible bird's nest. Unwound. Oh boy. Hopefully we don't run out. All right, well it looks beautiful once it's wound on the bobbin, but I was, I was meant to have a lot more on the bobbin. That looks outstanding, my friend. Leave Look at that. that. I say that's great. Leave it there. It's now time to draw Drop. out either side. I think then once it's drawn out, if you make a little bend back and forth mm -hmm. so that we can kind of have some leverage mm -hmm. so that we can tip it from either side. Sound like a plan? Yeah. That outstanding, Joe. That thing looks beautiful. Great job, my friend. This is awesome. Let's give it a trial. The salamander pot. Look at that. Perfect. 
Beautiful forge work, great fun, bro. What an outstandingly fun day it has been. It's been tremendous fun having Joe here in the workshop. Make sure you check out his channel in the link below. He's gonna be here for a couple of weeks, hanging out, helping him out. We're gonna be having some great fun. This Scottish Claymore. We're gonna be continuing on that in tomorrow's episode, as well as Joe working on other projects, us having a load of fun, and hopefully you all being entertained. So make sure you subscribe for more daily videos. I'm gonna see you tomorrow. Have a lovely, lovely day, and uh, make sure you go make something in your own workshop, it's a lot of fun, I assure you that.